Hey, what's up, Exiles? Belton here. Welcome to the No BS opening weekend recap and thoughts. AKA, I got shit to do. And I know I can't compete with the production value of all the uh, POE content uh, tourists, let's call them, that frequent my homepage uh, <coughs> for a couple weeks uh, once every quarter. Uh, so we start things off. Um, some of you probably noticed that I was absent for the league start. So just a quick, uh, quick explanation. Why I missed the first 24 hours of league start. Um, my family uh, was hanging out with them. My mother just turned 65 this past week, and my father had organized a trip for them and their friends to go uh, down to Cape Cod. A bunch of people have known since the early 20s. Um, my dad is getting surgery soon, and was told by the doctor that he was not uh, medically fit to go. And I could tell that you know he was pretty bummed out about that. And uh, you know I don't get a ton of time to, to spend with him, so I decided to spend the week down with him, and uh, that was what you know drew me away from there. Few people have messaged me thinking something was wrong. Everything's all good. Uh, just uh, obviously prioritize something that is, uh, by every measure, uh, more important. So we did miss the first 24 hours, but that's all right. Never seen a hill that we can't climb. So um, what we'll be discussing today, just quickly going over what I've been doing for my first 24 hours, uh, technically the opening weekend. Just let you know my initial thoughts here and just kind of bang this out real quick. Um, you know, obviously league start, your time is valuable. So let's get right down into it. There are 12 points we're going to be talking about. Graphics, the league mechanic, what am I playing, POB, Act 1 to 10 clear time, storyline and lore, currency exchange, King's March activities, um, the net worth after 24 hours, am I going to mirror craft, what will it be, uh, miscellaneous thoughts, any surprises, small things that I noticed, and were there any disappointments. While there's a lot of things on that list, we're going to bang through them out real quick. So, number one, graphics. I didn't really notice shit, uh, to be honest. Uh, it might be my computer. I know watching the, the League release video, it made it seem like the graphics were being overhauled to a POE2 level. It looked drastically different. Now, it, again, it could just be my computer. It is quite old. It's not like ancient, but um, it's probably like, it's right around the age that like the specs and system information um, are most likely filed away somewhere in the same cabinet that like Bill Clinton's overseas flight, flight passenger manifestos are. You know what I mean? Uh, like I got it around a time when it was like when me too sounded more like an operating system than a global activist movement but the times they have a change yet uh, old faithful remains tried tested and true love this computer 10 11 12 years old still running like a champ uh, but again the graphics that might be on me I'm not sure let me know did you guys see that I thought it was like uh, comparing it to the video big difference but anyways I digress number two the league mechanic and the axe this is an easy one didn't touch it. Um, I'm just traditionally pretty bad at leveling. Uh, league mechanics, obviously, I like to engage with them early when I can. Often there's an opportunity because it's a, it's a novel concept and people don't know how to min-max it or optimize it properly yet. However, um, because I was playing melee for the first time and on the left side of the tree for the second time ever, uh, I just figured I would stick to what I know and, and just uh, keep things as streamlined as possible, especially because I was trying to catch up. Uh, so what build am I playing or what archetype? Uh, I want to do something uh, like an armor stacker or in that vein. I uh, really, really enjoyed playing that at the end of last league. Um, and I also think that there's going to be a knee-jerk reaction, uh, as is often the case in, in Path of Exile, when something gets nerfed or when people have a perception of it getting nerfed. Um, you know, F Fizz Taken As was largely removed and Grace was changed, um, or nerfed rather. And um, while the, those are obviously large and material impacts and, and certainly substantial uh, nerfs to certain elements of the build, um, I do think that like people tend to disproportionately react to those. And when people overreact, uh, that just is another uh, way of saying that there, therein lies an opportunity potentially. Um, I'm, I'm not uh, obviously the most experienced with Armor Stacker, but um, typically and traditionally, the passions and the interests that I've had have been what I've pursued. And that's, that's you know, led me down a, um, I would say, a successful path. So don't really have a concrete plan, but that's, uh, you know, uh, ill defined or loosely defined what I'm planning on doing from here. Uh, number four. Uh, can I get a POB link to what I'm doing? No. Um, I've been asked this a few times. In fact, somebody asked me four and a half minutes after I started the build if I had a POB link, which I thought was hilarious. But anyways, I don't use POB. Uh, my build is trash. Uh, but uh, as the 1% Jesus, a.k.a. the Prophet Prophet, always says, there are no bad builds. You are just poor. So when I'm able to mask my deficiencies and clear shortcomings as a player with the good old mirrors and divines, the capitalist way, I will let you guys know what I'm into playing. Uh, and joking aside, 
uh, I will also, uh, you know, once I, once I kind of land on something more concrete and, and uh, actually get like a clear strategy and uh, there's some thought and, and vision put into it. But I don't, I don't want to sort of haphazardly present something that, you know, uh, misrepresents uh, some sort of tacit approval or um, endorsement of what I'm doing, uh, especially because the people who I think are, are most susceptible to to falling for something like that are probably like the least qualified to actually tell if it's, you know what I mean, good or, good or not. So um, no benefit to it. Plus, I don't really use POB. I know sometimes people think that I'm just sort of memeing when I say that, but uh, I really don't. I do it, everything in my head um, or I pull up a notepad document and just do some little napkin math. Um, all right. So number five here, chugging along. What was my clear time? Um, I think it was around six and a half hours to clear Act 10 fully, which I know is not very good by itself. And frankly, it would have been longer if I hadn't been given waypoints. But uh, by my good old friend, uh, Sir Free For All, shout out to Sir FFA, one of the officers of my guild. Uh, I suck at leveling straight up. No, no other way around that. Um, the way I see it, because I play every league from the beginning, like first day to the last day, it represents like less than a fraction of a percent of my playing time each league. It's never been like a, a massive hindrance. Um, and so it's just in terms of like things that I could shore up or improve upon, it just doesn't seem like anything that really has any function or utility. I get that there's people who like to race for the sake of racing. That's not where my interests lie. Um, so that's, uh, that's just probably always going to be the case, but, uh, I do understand that other people, um, you know, they, they approach things in a, uh, a, a different lens. Um, the next thing, and I was actually surprised by this question, but somebody was asking me about it on stream. Um, with respect to the uh, new league announcement and stuff, what I thought about uh, kind of like the new world they developed, like the lore of, you know, building the new town and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, do I engage with the, the kind of like the storyline or the, the, writing, the writing of the game as it were, I suppose. Um, and I was trying to think of a way to answer this, but I feel like uh, this video probably does it a little better. Ha! <laughs> and the reason... All right, moving on. Number seven, the currency exchange. Here's a big one. So, uh, the currency exchange, I'm not going to go too in-depth to this. Uh, obviously, I could uh, quite a bit. However, just some little quick notes. Uh, I did do a, a long, actually two four videos prior to release, kind of speculating on different things that I thought could potentially be issues. Some red flags, some red, Jesus, some red flags, some things to possibly look out for just with respect to uh, possible manipulation tactics people could use, whatever. I wasn't trying to be alarmist. A couple of people said that. Again, very optimistic outlook I have towards this, and I've really enjoyed using it so far. However, it should be noted um, that it, it actually does function the way that I had sort of uh, speculated. <coughs> um, the, uh, the market price thing does not work as you would think it would, right? When you see market price, you would think that gives you like a weighted moving average. Let's say like the, the average sale price of the most, like you know, 100 most recent transactions totaling the X amount of whatever the material is. Uh, it actually just shows like the top five listings. So... Uh, I know this specifically because uh, I tried to sell five fracturing shards and um, they weren't selling five, uh, like a bundle of five. So I listed them one at a time and it went 13 chaos. The first one sold immediately, then 13 chaos immediately, 13 chaos immediately, 13 chaos immediately. And then I put it up and then the, the thing just automatically changed it to seven chaos. And because I, I got into the rhythm, that's my fault because I clicked too quickly, but I got in the rhythm. The first four were all 13. So I just did them at a one. And I didn't manually change the price, but it dropped the price by almost half because the, you know, there was a buy order, I guess, for four fracturing shards for 13C. And then the next highest one, because fracturing shards aren't that super common, I, I suppose, like, you know, 22 hours into the league start uh, in terms of what people are going for. Uh, the next highest buy order was 7C. And what I noticed through that was that, um, A, it changed my bid or my, like, what, what my... Um, like when it when it automatically fills up the box, like what I want, what uh, uh, what I have, uh, it changed the what I want from thirteen to seven to match the market price, and then the market price instantly changed from thirteen C to seven C because the highest offer on the market there was seven chaos. And I mentioned this in the previous video that this might cause issues or has the potential to cause issues because if you have an illiquid market, let's say there was something that had only ten listings, they were all five chaos each. If me and like three or four of my friends, I mean, not that many four friends to buy at that price point, but let's just say hypothetically, we buy all of them at 5C and then it only shows the top five listings. So I could relist mine at 20, you do 19, next guy does 18, 17, 16, 15. You go and look, it says the market price is 16 because that's the best one that's listed. And then the next price is only one chaos above, whatever. And it gives the appearance of validity, but it has absolutely no kind of aggregating or moving or weighted data there. 
Um, and so I, I think that that, that is a, a, not a good system, whatever. In fact, I actually think it would be better for them to not even have it there at all because um, I think it's actually misleading. Uh, there, there are some also like kind of buggy things where um, when you talk to uh, Faustus sometimes, I, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, please let me know in the comments because I feel a little crazy sometimes. You know, let's say I put in like chaos and it'll be like, I want divines. Right, sometimes, so you see right here, it just went 135, 136. Sometimes I'll go there and it'll be like 00 or 11. It'll be like, sorry, no data available. Then you go to the trade site and you see there's actually like 25,000 of them for sale. And so like, you know, you go in and you enter, okay, like I wanna buy like two of these and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do an update or it just has a one here. Or like you do a 13, like j j just the way like the, again, I'm being, I'm pretty, pretty like nitpicky here. Uh, Again, I, I want to just digress a moment and say that on the whole, I think this is absolutely incredible. And this is like, this is going to be game changing for so many people because trade was such, such a taxing experience for so many people. So I, that, that's not, that doesn't elude me. Obviously I trade m more than probably anyone, frankly, but if not anyone, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm up there. Uh, so this, this impacts me probably more than almost uh, anybody as well, right? So uh, this isn't me just trying to shit on things like that. But um, I do think that there are some, I don't know if they're just oversights or things that they need to fix here. But the way that this works is a little uh, odd. Uh, the market ratio thing as well, I think needs to be tweaked a little bit. And just do be on the lookout for, you know, situations like what I was just mentioning there. Um, I do think by and large, those issues will be, um, you know, overcome by the fact that there are so many people playing which is an incredible thing too i saw that on steam it was the all-time highest concurrence but also um just the, the liquidity of these over time will be met right um hinecor is locked 17 to 1 damn these were 9 to 1 last night anyways so those are my thoughts on the thing i'll, I'll give more in-depth ones again sorry i, I realize this is the the no cap low gap recap <sighs> gotta love the alliteration there but uh Anyways, yeah, uh, just just be on the lookout for that. I, I think that, uh, again, on, on the whole, very, very, very promising feature. And I think uh, the best thing about it, uh, aside from its its core function, is just how many people that that will re-engage with a part of the game that, uh, yeah, I absolutely love, right? So uh, the next thing, uh, the King's March activities. Um, I call them King's March activities because I don't actually know what the real name for them is. You know, when you visit King's March and they have all that stuff you can do with ships and blah, 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 blah. I have no comment on that because I haven't done it yet. No idea how it works. As I said, I didn't interact with the league mechanic while leveling. Uh, just something I haven't got around to yet. I'm not purposefully avoiding it. Uh, it just wasn't a priority for me uh, immediately, especially when I'm playing catch up. In particular, because I think there was, um, you know, gauging the sentiment of the crowd is obviously somewhat of a speculative act uh, by nature. But it's because so many people were excited about that and because it's a fairly low, uh, low interaction uh, activity compared to something like Necropolis crafting where it's like, You've got to, if you wanted to engage with that fully, it's like, you know, you're pulling up spreadsheets, you're collecting a hundred different things, you're putting them in place. That's a very high engagement activity, but because you can do like, you know, so many of the league things kind of passively, I, 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 I surmise that large amounts of people, and especially given the fact that there's so many new people or returning people playing, uh, I didn't think that it would be necessary really, or financially that, uh, not viable, but optimal, I guess for me to go after something that was gonna be most likely quite saturated. So it's just something I haven't got around to yet, but again, when I do um, when I do explore that a little bit, we'll go into it further. So what's my net worth after 24 hours? This is a little hard to land on. Uh, the Sunday of the first weekend, it always um, fluctuates quite a bit because uh, obviously there's a, sh a ton of people who play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then you know the weekday starts, um, Asiatic hours, so like usually around midnight, one, 2 a.m. in Eastern Standard Time, uh, prime time for, for like Asia and uh, the oceanic regions or whatever um the prices tend to go up there player numbers tend to drop and then obviously during the week there's less people playing than on weekends you can notice every single league like very patterned material costs on things will go up like right as like uh, europe and um, north america log out on sunday evening um sometimes there's a bit of a, a pullback like you know the prices go up sometimes they, they drop a little bit uh in, in the morning but uh, in general you'll see a, an upward trend uh, for example, there, we just saw that the div to chaos ratio was, uh, what was it, 136 or something. Uh, 14 hours ago, uh, it was like 79, 80 chaos. So that's gone up, uh, what, 75% in uh, intra-daily, which is, which is pretty nuts, right? And I, if, if you're looking for ways to kind of uh, cope with that and deal with that, I have a video uh, under my belt and recommends called Investing in Path of Exile. 
um, the real best way to make currents. I can't remember what the subtitle is, but if you want to um, learn about like that phenomena and different ways to to kind of combat that that mass inflation, uh, obviously it's very volatile at the beginning of a league, but uh, POE is perpetually in a state of currency inflation. So how to hedge against that with different investments and uh, different asset classes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That video covers that, so I won't go into it too deeply there. Um, that being said, my net worth uh, the last time I tracked it was uh, 21 hours in. Um, I had hit level 84, I believe. What am I right now? 85 now, and I had 151 or 147 divines. It was just over a mirror I'd made, and um, it's hard. It's hard to again to put an exact number because, as I just mentioned, the, the Currency markets and certain items are constantly in flux. Uh, one of the uh, better things that I've put together is, you know, uh, about 40% of a quad tab um, worth of Vivid Vultures. Uh, I'm going to uh, be covering in a second what those are for without any giving away any specifics. But uh, again, I've got about 200 Vivid Vultures there. Uh, we got, you know, a third of a tab of Matrons. I've got, um, you know, the, the League First uh, Armor Over Cap Grasping Mail. Replica Dream Feathers. We got we got a few things in store. Uh, I won't go into the specifics there. Uh, I saw some people kind of leaving hate comments on uh, when I was just sharing what, what I've been up to for my first 20 hours on my community section. Um, you know, falling on deaf ears. Uh, I, again, I stream every league start. If uh, people have a hard time rectifying the results I have and the results that they're having, I'd be happy to help you. But, uh, you know, sitting there and being like, oh, this guy's a fucking cheater, blah, 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 blah. Not really a good way to, 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 to you know, to start off that dynamic or relationship but um there's nothing too complicated about what i'm doing i'm not going to go into it too much in depth or specifically here again it's all on vod and it's actually something i've already got multiple youtube videos about um and it's nothing uh terribly different than what i've done on, on other league starts uh frankly a lot of it is just looking at places where other people by and large aren't looking doing some basic arithmetic and be like okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, hmm, mm -hmm. try it out test the waters and then pursue if it works so uh, again, I'll do a, a bigger recap when, uh, uh, how, how far in the video are we? 12 minutes. All right, we're doing good. We're going pace. We're going to go sub 20 today, boys. Uh, but yeah, I'll do a further recap again. No cap, low yap, recap. Let's get it. <clears throat> All right, next part. Am I going to mirror craft? That is the question uh, that people always seem to ask me. Uh, well, I shouldn't say always seem to ask me, but it is a question that I was asked several times. Uh, throughout the course of uh, my playing and streaming at the beginning of the uh, league here the past couple of days. And of course, uh, the answer is yes, uh, I will be uh, mirror crafting. Uh, now, the next question, what is the craft going to be? Uh, nice try, Jenny. <laughs> Not happening. Uh, and then the 12, and this was definitely necessary for me to break this into three sub points. No, really. What is it? And the answer is legitimately, you'll see it when it's done, over-preparing materials to bang it out in a single shot rather than incrementally improving upon it. So I want to get everything prepared ahead of time and then just do it in like a single sitting instead of having it like be over, a, like, you know, doing it over a week where other people might try and screw around with like the materials that I need or might try to be competitive or might give themselves a tie line. Obviously, competitively, mirror crafting is a pretty insular, small community, so... If there's two people going after the same thing and they can see your exact progress and, and currency state and all that stuff at all times and you have no idea that they're even doing it, that's naturally competitive advantage for them. Um, I'm still going to mirror craft the whole thing, but again, I'm going to prepare everything at once so I can try and do a single shot just so that uh, I can mitigate that risk and uh, you know try to maximize my potential for success. Um, all right, so the last, uh, the last points here. Uh, miscellaneous thoughts. Uh, there's lots of people playing. Uh, that's great to see. I'm glad that there's enthusiasm and optimism in the mainstream narrative surrounding that game. Um, I really hope that that lasts. Uh, I kind of made a joke at the beginning. It might have sounded a little spiteful, which perhaps there's a little bit of truth to that. Uh, but I, I jokingly call a lot of PoE content people with no, no specifics tourists because... You know, you go and there's like 100,000 people playing and it's the greatest game in the world for two weeks. And then, you know, two weeks later when the next big thing comes along, guess what? There's a video that comes up almost in unison. Why I'm quitting the league with like this doom and gloom thing and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the front page of Reddit, the first week of like every league I've ever played is just talking about how terrible certain things are. And, and I don't know if it's just people are jaded. Um, maybe I'm jaded or maybe I've just lost touch. Or, or maybe it's perhaps that, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a vocal minority. Um, people uh, tend to be, I guess, more outspoken about uh, things that they have negative reactions to than positive ones, I guess. Uh, I know that that's like a, do a documented phenomenon. But uh, 
I just, I'm, you know, I, I obviously care about this game a lot. I've, I've dedicated a good portion of my life, uh, especially recently, to, to this game. So when there's a, a positive and enthusiastic uh, kind of aura and uh, uh, sort of communal response to something, naturally that rubs off on you and it, it makes, uh, you know, getting up every day and coming and doing this uh, makes that a lot more fun. So that's, that's, a, that's a big W uh, for me. Uh, and I think for the game at large. Uh, number 14, surprises. Uh, so are there any things that, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I expect that we're coming or that uh, again surprise me uh the amount of content added that was a big one um i haven't even opened the like ui for the new uh, again what's it called like the docs or the kalgoor i can't remember the fucking name of it king's march um or read the wiki page for like half the stuff they added this patch i probably should have done that last week when i was chilling with my family but uh i just kind of wanted to separate those two worlds and, and take some family time so i kind of went into this league a little bit blind frankly that's not that unfamiliar i do that very often i find it keeps things fresh um you know uh, experiencing a challenge firsthand and kind of working my way through it is sort of the fun for me i guess too part of it's like kind of a solving a puzzle more so than taking like a footprint somebody else has thought out and just kind of following that i don't find that as rewarding not a criticism of anyone who does it's just never really been for me and then um you know i've always been able to like overcome any shortcomings that i might have as a result of that creative process um through through currency acquisition anyways so there's a balance to be struck there and you know once in a while not always but once in a while i come up with something pretty cool so I feel pretty, uh, I guess, proud of myself or, you know, it, it, it's rewarding when you, when, when you, when you quote unquote discover something. It's one of my, my, my favorite feelings in the game. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, this was, this was a league where it was like, even when it started, it was like, damn, like there's so many changes here that like, I just wanted to focus kind of on one thing. You know what I mean? Um, it's not because I'm disinterested. Uh, it's just cause there's so much. I've always found that there's been a greater level of success attached to people that focus on depth rather than breadth when it comes to POE. Like being a specialist, uh, those people tend to be, uh, by every measure, more successful than people who look to be like generalists. Just because there's so much in POE, you know, like people who focus on delve or people who focus on crafting, people who focus on leveling, people who focus on boss killing, blah, blah, blah. Whatever your niche is, maybe it's a build, maybe it's an archetype, maybe it's a, a certain pursuit, maybe it's a kind of item, whatever, I, you know, everyone's got their own interests. But if I, again, not to, to give unsolicited advice here, but uh, if you are new to the game, um, if you find something that you love doing, uh, don't 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 stray away from that because you, you think you need to kind of like pad your resume. It's like, you, I mean, you can experience those things too, but uh, you might find that you actually do find some more success the deeper you get to know something rather than, and it might even be counterintuitive to think that way, but rather than, you know, trying to learn more about more. Um, for myself, there are like massive blind spots. I like quite frank, like quite literally, I don't know if you were to ask me what 65% of skill gems did, or like if they were to cast them and be like, what skill is this? Couldn't tell you. I have no idea what like any, like, I think I know like what four melee skills are like max, like lightning strike, molten strike, cyclone, and grieve. Ground slam. Five, smite. Okay, that's where I tap out. All right, <laughs> it's a growing list. Either way, uh, I'm, I'm glad too that they made some uh, melee buffs. A lot of people seem excited about that. Again, not something that I've really had any firsthand experience with. It's just not an archetype that I've really delved into in the past. Uh, not something I'm avoiding um, intentionally. Like I don't have uh, any kind of uh, opposition to the archetype, um, dis which is like, you know, oh, I would never play like uh, mines, tra traps, totems, or minions. Uh, cause I don't like the idea of getting better and then having like just running around in circles while other stuff kills things for you. That play style to me just doesn't resonate. It's not something I would never want to do. Not the case for melee. It's just something I haven't really got my feet wet with, uh, yet. And, uh, you know, not that I've talked to every person playing PoE, but it does seem that a lot of people are excited, uh, about the melee changes and just looking at the player numbers and the ascendancy distributions, uh, clearly, uh, what they, what they changed has worked at least from the onset. So um hope for hope for that to continue and uh hope for those of you guys that are playing melee that it's been a, a rewarding experience uh in fact i'd love again uh, because it's a, a gray area for me or a area of where i've got you know less of a, a knowledge base if uh, if anyone's quite experienced with there who has any thoughts that they love to share uh again i read all my comments i, I i'd legitimately like to, to to hear some feedback on your guys ends because um it's always uh it's always good to to get a better grasp for the the player base at large all right um now uh number 15 uh any tiny things that i noticed like 
not things that would like make or break something, but just kind of like mm, you kind of engage with it and you sort of make a mental note. Maybe don't even say it verbally. Not something you like ever really bring up in a conversation, but just something that kind of like stuck out. Um, for me, it was, uh, and I don't even know if this is the case. Maybe it was just like a recency bias or whatever, but uh, it felt to me like certain map layouts or tile sets uh, seemed like significantly larger and like longer or like more, you know, instead of being like a square room, they were like stretch out long ways like namely i remember like upper prison and uh maybe it was brutus's room or whatever and uh a couple other ones while i was leveling where it just it just felt like that room or that tile set was like two or three times as long as it had been in the past uh but again that that might just be um me uh you know looking at things through the lens of my own contemporary experience and uh not being objective but yeah if anyone if anyone else had felt that way let, let me know um yeah, what else? Uh, quality currencies, uh, they seem to be incredibly scarce. Uh, at this point, I've probably done several hundred maps, believe it or not. And um, obviously going through the leveling experience. And I think I found like seven whetstones, like 11 armor scraps, and uh, I think like three baubles or four baubles. And you can't buy baubles at the vendors anymore. Um, so inc incredibly rare i mean like obviously they want to make that commiserate with their 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 value add like what they do now is obviously exponentially better than what it what it did previously but um it, it does seem again you know what? i'm not going to comment on this because i'm not doing it like t16 t17 content yet so maybe it's balanced more around that but just relative to what it was before they're definitely definitely a noticeably less common uh, what else? Uh, new recombinators. I, I don't even think they should be called recombinators anymore. Uh, I think that's an atrocity. I'll mention this further in a moment. Uh, <laughs> like they still have kind of a cool function, but they're not recombinators anymore. Um, another other uh, small things I noticed. Uh, far better ascendancy diversity this league on the opening weekend. Uh, last weekend, because I wanted to do a mirror craft, obviously I was doing some market research, and I very distinctly remember on the opening weekend there were between 23 to 29 percent of every single player were was a dead eye not a ranger a dead eye <laughs> like if there's what uh one two three four five six seven uh and then three on each one so there's what like 21 if you count ascendant there's like 20 what 26 27 different ascendancies and like one in three of them are playing the exact same one uh, i think obviously that that needed a bit of a, re a rebalancing that might have been two leagues ago actually um either way though uh it's encouraging to see things kind of taper down a little bit more. I know people tend to follow whatever is kind of trendy and, uh, you know, what is quote unquote meta or, um, or whatever is popular with like the, uh, the bigger streaming personalities. But, um, you know, it's, it's never a good thing to see 30% of the player base playing with like bows on a one of two skills. Uh, I did notice that Deadeye was down to 9%. Um, that's, that's great. You know, that's, that's obviously higher than, if it were equal distribution, that's still higher than it would be uh, otherwise. But that's definitely healthier, I think. Uh, I can't remember if the top one was like Gladiator or Jug. Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but uh, it was definitely a shuffling there. And uh, if nothing else, it's good when things um, switch up. And for the last thing, not to end on a sour note, but, um, you know, what, was there anything I was disappointed with or that I did? I thought that they didn't do well? Uh, these are obviously not things that, like... Uh, things that they can't fix in the future. Maybe they patch them. Uh, maybe some of them are, are just sort of tiny, kind of uh, esoteric, uh, you know, um, <laughs> sort of, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Like personal, uh, you know, uh, irritances that aren't shared with other people. But these were like the only things I felt kind of like a negative sentiment towards, I guess, that I've experienced thus far. Uh, the auction house um, market price tool is bad. I kind of covered that earlier. Um, I just broke here. It's just bad. Uh, uh, but again, we went into... We went into more depth there. Uh, another thing that kind of bummed me out was that enchants and runes that don't work on uh, unique weapons. I think that's actually, I, I, to me, I just found that kind of silly. Um, by, by design, unique weapons are already worse than rare weapons. Like, all, like I understand, like for, I mean, my build too, if I'm playing an armor stack or replica dream feather, for example, you have to use a unique weapon. Um, but if you were to get, you know, a unique weapon that just does like fizz damage versus a rare weapon, the rare weapons are always better by design. Rare weapons are meant to be the best items in the game. Um, and I also think because unique weapons can have like unique effects already on them, being able to like combine and, 
uh, contrast and, and, and like have those like interweaving and interacting effects of different unique items and how those could interact with enchants. I was really looking forward to that. Again, I didn't look into the league too much beforehand, so maybe people knew this before the league came out already, but um, I, I hadn't read that part that closely, I guess. And so uh, when I realized uh, that I couldn't put runes on Replica Dream Feather, I was a little bit bummed out. Um, I understand maybe it's just a, a power balancing issue, but uh, to me, it, it seemed like again rare items are better maybe i'm i'm just a little um you know i'm looking at it from the perspective of uh, i always have mirror items every league so uh that's maybe not the the same experience for the average player who's using them on a you know uh, lower to mid tier rare type of weapon not the absolute best ones that exist so perhaps my my views on this are not uh, necessarily useful or reflective of the whole but either way that was my my innate reaction to it um albeit perhaps a, a more of an emotionally charged one than a, a rational or logical one. And uh, Recombinators, that was a huge... Like, Recombinators do not have Sentinel mods. Uh, they do not transfer Fractured mods. Uh, they cannot move mods from drop-only sources to foreign bases. So, like, for example, you can't move, like, Global Defenses from a Grasping Mail to, like, the the new Vol Regalia, or what I can't remember the name of the T1ES base, because um, that's a Grasping Mail drop-only mod. Um... And uh, there's also a strong, this last part is somewhat speculative, but there's a strong consensus developing um, from the forum threads I've read uh, that the previously static and fairly simple way to calculate recombinator probabilities have been replaced with a sort of obfuscated or, uh, you know, uh, opaque mod weighting uh, and kind of like dependent, you know what I mean? Like if a mod is has a lower weight itself, it becomes harder for to transfer that. And, and it just like what people were saying, uh, who have done it, you know, dozens, and, if not hundreds of times, was that uh, it doesn't seem to be the basic, you know, 50-50 for the base, and then depending on the number of total prefixes and, you know, mutual exclusivities, there's like a 40, 35, 70%, whatever. Uh, people were just saying that it seems that there's some new level of uh, RNG layered into there that, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's data mineable, but certainly doesn't seem that people have figured that out yet. Um, the lack of clarity there uh, will have no possible outcome, in my opinion, other than uh, inaction or frustration by people. Um, and uh, the the fun and strong element of recoms uh, has seemingly been removed, frankly, for combinators. Uh, Sentinel is one of my top three leagues. Sentinel, Legacy, and Dark Shrines. Shout out to Dark Shrines. Any OGs that played that, I see you. Seek the Apex. Um, and shout out to Gorge. But, uh, yeah, I'd like... Recombinators were at the core of what was most fun to that league. I understand they were very strong, but um, to bring to bring back the the recombining system that they have, and then just gut everything that made them unique. Um, to me, all that seems like is just like fuck, is like craft like padding mid tier crafting, and um, like to mash together mid tier crafts without understanding the process by which they would be made organically or naturally. And I actually think that's kind of counterproductive. And let me give you an example. Last league, Necropolis, very little of what Necropolis did. Now, it didn't do, it's not like it didn't do any of this, but by and large, it didn't add, like Crucible League, for example. Crucible League added a new best in slot for every single weapon and every single shield and offhand in the game, period. Necropolis, there's like, you know, certain mods like the, the mana per int or whatever. Yes, they're going to be like the best helmets exist because there were some Necropolis exclusive mods. But it wasn't like the overall representation of that craft uh, or that crafting mechanic was pushing the limits of what was possible. It wasn't hyper creative. It was kind of a nuisance to use. Uh, it just made like mid tier items really, really accessible. And part of the issue with that was that the thing what people might buy seven or eight different items like upgrading. Maybe that might be a bit of a stretch. Let's say three or four different bows upgrading from. You know, just like their entry level leveling one, the first one they find in a map, maybe a unique bow, and then they get like a, you know, tier two, tier one, essence tier prefix kind of one or whatever. But that that process is kind of what keeps people playing the game, you know, having these upgrades. And like Necropolis just made it so that you could get basically the best of what was possible in that mid range until you get to like the mirror items um, for basically nothing. Most of the people that did that didn't really have any understanding of the system they were using. They just copied a template to put it in there. It was incredibly taxing. And again, it wasn't really pushing any boundaries. It was just padding the middle. Um, and uh, my concern with the Sentinel Recombinator mechanic that they have here is that because of their omission of basically everything that made it interesting, fun, uh, and unique, is that they're just doing the same thing, right? It's like, do we really need another way to be able to get like 
you know, let's say you got Merciless and Flaring on one, like a bow, and then you got Dictators on another bow. It's like, hey, three, two, one bow. That's like, cool. Yeah, I'm sure you'd have like that, that short term, like, oh, dopamine hit, like, sick, three, two, one bow. But um, scarcity is an important element to, uh, I think, reward, right? Like there has to be some element of friction in, in, in terms of having any kind of um, appreciation for what you're getting, as well as for player retention and longevity. Um, but most of the like creative elements and the nuanced elements of recombinators uh, are entirely gone as far as I can tell. You can't move mods. Uh, there's no Sentinel mods. They have Obfuscator kind of hidden behind the scenes waitings. You can't move to base types that are on foreign. Uh, you can't move fractured mods like to get double fractures together. It just for for me, I uh, th now this is maybe a bit of a stretch, but for me, I'd almost have preferred that it even put it back. Or if they did, they called it something else. Um, I know I'm going harping on this, but I was like super excited about that, and then it was like, oh okay, uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's like watching like the fourth sequel of a movie franchise that you loved. You know, the first one is like the best movie ever. Second one's like, oh, okay, it's losing a little bit of quality. Third one's like, wow, I uh, feel like this is strayed from it. And then by the time you get to like the 13th version, it's just like, what the hell am I watching and how the hell did I get here? You know what I mean? I feel like we're at like the 13th version of Recombinators. But perhaps I'm overthinking this and I don't want to end too doom and gloomy. But I wanted to share my thoughts on that because I don't know if anyone else shares them. Um... Or feels the same way, but that was definitely, uh, I would say, in terms of disappointments, the one that stuck out to me the most. Just because I loved, I love Sentinel League so much. I thought that was probably the number one league ever um, for, for myself. Anyways, the last thing I want to cover here, just a quick little forecast. Uh, you know, gonna go head down, heart open, can't lose. I love GGG. I love the work they put in. I love the risk they're willing to take. I love being a part of it. I love seeing people happy and excited about the game again. I'm genuinely intrigued and eager to explore all of the new things that have been added. It has been a long time uh, where I felt like a tourist in my own land, uh, so to speak. Uh, it's long since been a time, I should say. Not it's a, a long time, but um, you know, to feel like I'm kind of not out of place, but like there are things where I, I'm legitimately like, oh wow, how does this work? And like something new to figure out. Not just like a, you know, a little tweak or a, a little uh, patch change where there's a numerical shift, but like fully new systems and mechanics and like things to learn. Like I just, I, lo I love that part of this game. Um, it's, uh, to, to me, it's like a giant puzzle and a uh, creative outlet. And I know many of you, even though I'm, I might be a little bit more uh, gushing about it, I know many of you love this game in the same way that I do too. But, uh, you know, that's a little bit of unfamiliar territory, but fuck it, boys. I love it. I love it. So, uh, yeah, anyways, guys, drop a like on the video, and uh, if you uh, enjoyed it, and consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to join me on the journey. We're going to be uh, going after it this league, as I always do. Uh, I don't necessarily have a uh, concrete plan this league. Um, had some had some difficulties and frustrations kind of managing, micromanaging like, groups of people last league, so going to by and large be going at this kind of solo, and then not taking like investments or, or crafting teams and stuff like that, and I'll still do mirror crafting and whatever, and um, I'm really just gonna to follow my passions, follow my, uh, you know, whatever intrigues me, just go that way. Um, I'm inherently a competitive person, so I'll still probably end up doing things on the, the upper echelon from like a, you know, if you're looking on, on a, an objective spectrum of, of all players, but um, hopefully uh, in, in that process, I can provide some value to you guys and uh, perhaps have a, um, you know, a, uh, a moment that or some views that uh, maybe you guys can empathize with or, or that you share. And uh, we can have a dialogue going because uh, I'd love to uh, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Again, it's been a long time that since I've uh, had this, like, uh, you know, uh, new car feeling with the league. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, exciting, right? So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, quick as uh, Belton can be, kind of opening weekend summary. Uh, genuinely interested in hearing how things have gone for you guys, what you're focusing on, and how you've interpreted all the new stuff this patch. Uh, please uh, leave a comment below if you've got anything you'd like to share. I read through them all, and uh, I only sass approximately 15% of people. I mean, sometimes a little sassy in the comments, but, you know, that's, yeah, I was trying to think of a, a clever thing to, to, to kind of segue there and swing and a miss, all right? Moving on. May the odds ever be in your favor, <laughs> exiles. Uh, good luck, God bless, and good night. I will see you in the next one. Happy hunting. Profit, profit.